Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Purdue Technology Center. My name is Greg Deason. I serve as Vice President for the Purdue Research Foundation. I'm also the Executive Director of the Purdue Research Park. I'm excited you're all here with us today and to welcome the new addition, new addition to the Purdue family here, which is the CACI International Group. They are a professional services provider for IT solutions in defense, intelligence, and homeland security sectors. And in just a moment, we're going to hear from their president of U.S. operations and a little bit more about their company and all the exciting things that they'll be doing here in New Albany. So we're excited to have you here and to be with us. Before we proceed, though, I just want to take uh, one moment to recognize a few special guests that are here with us today. State Representative Rhonda Rhodes is here. Rhonda, uh, thanks for being here with us today. Also, Deputy Mayor Carl Malish is here with us today, and Mayor Doug England, which uh, we'll be hearing from Doug here in just a few moments. Thank you all for being with us. I know in addition there are some count our city council members uh, that were invited today, as well as Redevelopment Commission members, and we're thankful for you being here, as well as our advisory council members. This Purdue Technology Center has a group of advisors that are community leaders that are part of our program. They're represented here today as well as the companies that are here in the building. So thank you all for being here with us today. You know, fall is truly one of the great times to be in Indiana. I enjoyed some of the first glimpses of the fall colors as I drove down today. This is certainly a time where the citizens from the Midwest and the region flock to our state parks, which remain as one of the diverse and, and great assets for our state here in Indiana. If you've been just a few minutes from here, there's a, a very unique state park in our state called the Falls of the Ohio. Uh, this park is just off I-65. It's right on the banks of the Ohio River. When you're in the park, you look right across the river into downtown Louisville. One of the things that's unique about that park is it is, it is known for its fossil beds. Took my family there a few years ago, and as you're there, the odd thing about it is these fossils are believed to be millions of years old, and most of them are saltwater fossils. And you can see various layers of sediment that sort of stand as a testament to the changes that have occurred here over long periods of time. Well, in more recent times, we've seen a lot of economic changes in the state of Indiana. Right out of the gate, Indiana became a, a leader in agriculture. And then over time, we became a world leader in manufacturing. Well, now we're moving into the knowledge economy, an economy that's driven by highly educated, highly skilled workers. And the Purdue Research Park and the Purdue Technology Center are great enablers of that highly skilled workforce uh, and the knowledge economy that's coming. This year actually marks the 50th anniversary of the Purdue Research Park. We were founded in West Lafayette at the Purdue campus there in 1961. In celebration of that, we did a study this year with Thomas P. Miller and Associates to take an intensive look at the economic impact of the Purdue Research Park uh, in the state. There's a map here in the lobby that actually depicts our locations in the state, starting here in New Albany, moving up to Indianapolis, West Lafayette, and also Merrillville, which is near Chicago. What we found is that this network is actually having a $1.3 billion annual impact on the state of Indiana. Within that, $48 million of taxes, both state and local, are being paid by the companies that are in the Research Park network, and we're thrilled with that. One of the things we were most excited about, though, was to learn that the average salary for jobs in our research parks, $63,000 per job. That's a full 65% above the state average. And we found that over 4,100 employees making the research parks as a combined unit a top 20 employer in the state. As I said, we're thrilled with, uh, with all of this data and most thrilled with the quality of jobs that are being created because that was the vision, to have highly skilled jobs and educated workforce. Those were key drivers for why the Shine family, a local family here, gave land for this site so that we could create the technology center where we're gathered here today. There are seven high-tech companies here in this facility, and with them and the other entities that are here, there are 94 new jobs that have been created here in the community, and we're very excited. These companies that are here are blazing new trails in medical device technology, clean energy, clean technologies, data management, homeland security, and of course, defense. The creation of the Purdue Technology Center has also enabled educational opportunities in this region through the expansion of the Purdue University College of Technology. What happened as a result of this facility was the expansion of two-year degrees 
into four-year degrees, and we now have a record 266 students that are, are taking those programs here in the College of Technology. And about 80% of those students are actually traditional students. We're thrilled with that. And those students can meet their complete degree requirements for their bachelor's degrees right here in New Albany. The three bachelor's of science degrees that were created following the, the, the dedication of this facility include computer graphics technology, electrical engineering technology, and mechanical engineering technology. We already have graduates that are here locally from those programs. They're working in local businesses and contributing to the economy here. We also have students in those programs that are interns at the companies in this facility, and the companies are giving back as well. They're engaged with our companies in the building. They are, the, the, the students are involved with those companies, but the companies are going to the classroom as guest speakers. They're working with student organizations. So this vision of skilled workers and a concentration of high-tech businesses has become a reality here in New Albany, and that's what the Purdue Research Park and what the Purdue Technology Center here is all about. But we're not here to talk about anything much more, though, than this great new addition to the Purdue Technology Center, and that is CACI. And we're thrilled that you're here today to help us welcome this newest addition to our family. It's now my distinct pleasure to welcome to the podium the president of U.S. Operations for CACI Incorporated, William Farrell. And Bill, may I be the first to welcome you officially to the facility. We're thrilled that you're here, and we look forward to your remarks. Hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Greg, for that uh, nice introduction there. We're, we're very pleased to be here. These, these are grand occasions when you get to open a new office here, and uh, we're real excited. Uh, we were visiting with some of our clients uh, a little bit earlier here, and uh, we see a lot of growth in this area. And I have some prepared remarks, but it strikes me from listening to Greg, and I was talking to the mayor a little bit, that you know, we're, we're all about the economy here and trying to get things going here. Uh, so uh, first, I just want to uh, say what a pleasure it is to be here today and with all of our uh, my fellow uh, employees at CACI. This is really a great occasion. Uh, uh, Greg you mentioned some of the folks in the audience here. I uh, uh, express my appreciation and recognize my colleague on the, uh, I guess this is a DOC, even though we're sort of at the floor level here, but uh, Mayor uh, England here. Uh, I was interested in how New Albany came to be. I had not been here before, and so the mayor was kind enough to share with me a little bit of the history, which is quite fascinating. Uh, cities don't just you know, drop out of the air. They're generally here for a reason, and uh, uh, New Albany was established in 1813, I think. Uh, and uh, so for those of you that can do math, and since this is a technical outfit, I'm sure many of you can do math, <laughs> you will quickly realize that New Albany is coming up on a very uh, important uh, anniversary here pretty soon, so I'm sure some big, big plans here for that. So um, we do have uh, one of our valued uh, clients in the audience here, I just talked to Sherry Donahue is here, <laughs> there she is back there. Uh, Sherry is uh, from the Naval Surface Warfare Center uh, in Indian Head, Maryland. Uh, she's, uh, Sherry, I believe you have a home here locally and you're there in Crystal City, uh, Virginia during the week and commuting back here because you love this area so much, right? And Sherry uh, has been a client of ours for many, many years and uh, we've enjoyed a great relationship with her and we look forward to continuing that. Uh, we had uh, a couple of clients uh, just earlier uh, who came all the way down from uh, Crane, which I understand is about a two-hour drive. Uh, some of our newest clients, uh, we just won a, how big is that uh, task force? 34 million. 34 million dollars, uh, that's American money. Uh, so <laughs> that's good, right? that's uh, we're going to hire a bunch of people. We got to meet with our new clients and understand what their requirements are. I think there's great opportunity for us to grow here. And, uh, just a little bit about uh, CACI. I've gone way off my remarks here, so I'm trying to bring this back. But, uh, we just closed our fiscal year 11. We did a little over $3.5 billion in revenue, and we have some 14,000 employees uh, worldwide. Our customer is almost entirely the U.S. federal government. It's civilian agencies, it's the Department of Defense, it's the intelligence community. Now, for those of you who know, the intelligence community spans like uh, both uh, defense and civilian, so like 45% of our business is with the intelligence community and it tends to be our fastest growing part of our business and that's what our customers up at Crane are all about. We love to use acronyms 
in our business. I won't bore you with those acronyms, which you wouldn't remember anyway, but intelligence business, sort of the idea of an enduring requirement for the safety of this nation, and Crane as our customer is going to be growing, and we're going to be growing along with them. We, uh, in our past fiscal year, we added about 500 new employees total net to the company. We also acquired four or five different companies so far this fiscal year, just in the, uh, let's see, we're in September almost at the end of September now, so it's the first three months of our fiscal year, which started July 1st, we've acquired uh, three companies and we've added more than 200 net new employees to the company. So we're a growing <coughs> company, we're, high tech is an overused term, but it's a professional services and solutions company. Uh, we invest in our employees, I think we have a very uh, generous uh, educational sort of encouragement, lifetime learning sort of program, tuition reimbursement, we have our own internal CACI uh, Virtual University. Um, we hire a lot of people uh, getting out of the military services. We recognize that many of them haven't uh, hadn't get a chance to pursue an advanced degree or maybe not even a, an undergraduate degree at all. So we provide them with this sort of fully reimbursed program to get their degrees online, all a part of investing in their careers, helping uh, increase their value and. In, the value of CACI to its clients as well. So I have to wrap this up right now <laughs> because we want to get on to some more fun stuff. So I'm just going to uh, say thanks to everybody for inviting me. Uh, thanks, Greg. Thanks, Mr. Mayor here. Uh, thanks to all of you, our friends and colleagues, for joining us here today. And uh, I'm really looking forward to cutting this ribbon. It looks like we have scissors that uh, will actually work. I've done this before. I've had the big scissors. They don't really cut or anything. Plus, he give me those big scissors and I'd like to have this immediate impulse to run around with them. <laughs> Imagining my mother yelling at me from somewhere. <laughs> so uh, I have to surrender the, uh, the podium now to uh, my colleague over here. Uh, from there. Oh, first step. It's interesting when you're involved in, in one of these events, you're thinking of a hundred things, and right now I'm wondering what the quality control process was on the scissors that we've got today. I sure don't think that we're about to find out in just a moment. You know, accomplishing great things requires commitment, vision, and focus, and in the realm of economic progress, accomplishing truly great things requires great partners. Here at the Purdue Research Park, we could not have a better partner than the city of New Albany. And certainly the, the City Council, the New Albany Redevelopment Commission, have been extremely supportive. Throughout our short history here, we've had unwavering support of our efforts from the leaders of this community, and we thank you for your commitment to this center and to this park. It's now my great pleasure to welcome one of our great supporters to the podium, the Honorable Doug England, Mayor of the City of New Albany. I'm glad I'm not running again. I can't make any clicking speeches to match those. <laughs> uh, Greg, I just wish that you'd had this uh, MET degree. My son graduated from Purdue in 1989 as an MET, so I had to send him away there. Spent all that money I could just send here. So. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from someone who just seemed like lately I'm to stand up and introduce him and speaking at Purdue, and I'm an IU graduate and an IU alumni on the board. <laughs> and my, so is my wife. But my son did graduate from Purdue. But uh, this has really been a, a pleasure these last four years to provide, be here and to be a part of this. And he mentioned one thing about the uh, Shine family, the most generous family that I've seen around in our community to donate this here. <clears throat> when I could have sold this piece of ground to the department store for $7 million, and they gave it to Purdue because they care about education. And that's what this is all about. And I really like, uh, because I'm going to call him Bill, not William, I, I think Bill's yeah. probably okay. His company is going to bring a lot of jobs, that's what we're going to hear about. In this economy today, they're talking about, talking about good paying jobs. And I was really impressed with the number when you talk about the average salary of those that work in the park. But after uh, we flew up to uh, Purdue, Lafayette, and saw their research park, Carl and I flew up with them, and that was at the very beginning, that's before this place got, and got to be here for the groundbreaking of the original groundbreaking. I saw what it could be, and I think this is going to be greater than Lafayette. It's 
It's just the located the way it's located and the, the influence it's going to have on our community. And we've got companies here that are looking for well-trained people. I'm talking to even at the school, looking for well-trained people. Well, now we've got them here. We've got the Indiana University right up the road. We've got Purdue right here. And that's the backbone of our country is our educated, educated people are going to make things happen. So I'm being here with uh, today, and he talks about our cooperation as a city. You know, the right thing you do in life is when you spend the people's money on the people. Spending the people's money, okay, spend tax dollars and different federal funds that we get, spend it on places like Purdue Research Park and companies like that. That's the way you spend the money. You build roads, you do things, you know. And I've always said, you know, whenever... Sometimes you get criticized politically for spending things. I say, you know, anytime I spend money, invest money, I should say, on people that are doing progress, progressive things, how could it be wrong? It's got to be perfect. So we've been honored, Carl and myself both have been very honored to be a part of this here, uh, Purdue Research Park, and especially now I'm really welcoming after I got talking to Bill about some of the exciting things they do and what they're going to do and the caliber of people he's going to be looking to hire. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great addition to our community. And I'm uh, somewhat sad I'm not going to be around as mayor to see this thing grow further, but that was my choice. I uh, have grandchildren that are in college I need to spend some time with. So I'm going to, but I'm going to be around as a city councilman. I'm elected to stay on a little bit. Can't get my hands totally out of it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do congratulate Purdue and I do see you See you guys. Thank you again for coming to our community. And uh, we're very honored when companies of this count. You know, you can mention a lot of big names in this country. We were really honored that Purdue Research Park can attract the companies you attracted. Now, the, you know, we're not chopped liver over on the South River. <laughs> <laughs> Thank all of you for coming here. And I think this is a wonderful, great, great addition to know I'm proud to be here. Thank you, Mayor England. Before we proceed with the ribbon cutting, I just want to, it would be remiss if I didn't take just one moment. I, I'd just like for the Purdue Research Park and Tech Center team, just raise your hands. There, there is a team throughout the entire state that, that helps here in this facility. You may not always know that, but we've got people here that specialize in marketing and in events. That team is here today to help support what we're doing in New Albany because we believe in it. Much of that leadership comes from John Hannock, our statewide director. I especially want to recognize the team that is here locally. This is a team that live here and they think all day, every day of how to grow businesses, how to attract businesses, and to take good care of the companies that are here. Those efforts are led by Paul Moses who directs this facility. Mike Chapel, the facilities manager, and they are both assisted by Elva McMahon that most of you have already met today, but I'd like to give them a round of applause. At this time, I'd like to welcome our speakers and a few other uh, guests to come forward, and we're going to, uh, to cut the ribbon. Just, uh, just so we're all on the same page, I'll say one, two, three, and then we will cut the ribbon. Uh, and so on my count, one, two, three, cut. Concludes our formal part of the ceremony today. Uh, we do have refreshments, and you're you're able to go and take a tour of the facility that is located up on the second floor. We hope that you'll stay and enjoy the refreshments, our beautiful facility here, and especially take this opportunity to take a tour of CACI and their facilities that have been constructed upstairs. Thanks for being here with us today.